Hey guys, what's up? Welcome or welcome back. And welcome to part one on how I do my desert scenery. Well, you can see I've been pretty busy already. But I thought I'd step back and show you guys how I do my scenery. So what I'll be demonstrating is how I make and apply my dirt texture and how I add rocks and stuff like that and all the other details. And I'll show you how I do my roads. And I might even tackle the creek bed over there. In part two, I'll be showing you guys how I do the ground cover as far as bushes and tufts and trees and stuff like that. But in this video, again, starting from square one, adding dirt first and the, the following layers of material and we'll be working on this area over here so I hope you enjoy the video and we're gonna go ahead and get started alright so I got my ballasting all glued in all the way up into about here and as you can see I got a couple touch-ups to do right there but I'm trying to get the ballasting out of the way just to have it done um, but as you can see we have no ground cover here so I need to apply some dirt texture to this area then I can continue my ballasting so let me go ahead and uh, show you how I mix up some dirt texture it's pretty simple and it looks really good alright so what I have here is some regular play sand that you can buy at Home Depot or Lowe's this happens to be from Home Depot, it's Quick Creek Premium Play Sand. And I also have some non sanded grout here. This particular color is called Bone. And it's completely optional. Um, I'm just trying to lighten up the color of the sand. So let me go ahead and demonstrate how I mix some dirt texture up. And we'll go from there. Okay, so first, I'm going to grab the uh, two or three handfuls of the play sand. So we'll go ahead and, this is a splatter guard, but it works pretty well as a sifter. So I'll go ahead and dump that on here. And go ahead and just move it around, sifting out all the big rocks. pretty good there. I'll go ahead and save these rocks because it can add it on top of the first layer for more texture. So next what I want to do is I'm going to add just a little bit of the non-sanded grout. Go ahead and do two scoops. I'll go ahead and mix that up. Again, I'm just trying to lighten up the color of the sand. Just a little too dark for the area that I'm modeling. So you can see it does lighten it up. So next what I want to do with the actual strainer, I'll go ahead and dump this on a plate that has a fold in it. And then I'll go ahead and bend it like so. And I'll just go ahead and mix it through the sifter. Blending the both, blending both together. And I go ahead and repeat that a few times. Again, one more time. All 
All right, there we have it. Now this is ready to be applied on the layout. All right, so the first thing I like to do before applying any texture, especially if I have vertical surfaces or somewhat vertical or on the edges, I'll go ahead and lay a bead of Elmer's glue all around the more vertical surfaces so the texture doesn't slide down. And using a wet brush, go ahead and start painting the glue, especially right here. And now we can add some texture. So I like to do this a couple different ways. You can go ahead and sprinkle it on there with my hands like this. Or for larger areas, I'll go ahead and just take a scoop with my strainer. And just go ahead and tap it. Just go ahead and keep adding more layers till it fills up. and work on this area here. I do have a trash can underneath to catch all the extra sand. And sometimes if you don't put enough on here, you'll see the uh, Elmer's glue poking through kind of a darker area there which is okay after uh, it dries we can come back and add another layer so I'll go ahead and complete this area and we'll move on to the next steps all right so I'm good with the initial layer here and we're going to take some of the larger rocks that I sifted out of the place in and go ahead and just add it all around and a lot of them are going to roll down that's all right but at least we can get some of them on there so that looks pretty good there and I also have the sifted material from Cajon Pass all different sizes. Go ahead and sprinkle a little of these on there. Just being random with it. It's one thing that's pretty forgiving with scenery is that nature is pretty random so happy with that. You can always come back and add more later. But this is a good start. So the next thing I want to do right here in this area, I'm going to do the same thing I did here, which is an access road. Well, obviously it's going to end here because there ain't nowhere else to, for it to go. So let me go ahead and uh, show you how I do that. All right, so I'd like to simulate a road here exactly like I did over here and I have some scrap pieces of uh, styrene plastic so I'll find the appropriate size and what I like to do is go ahead and just drag it down trying to keep it as level as possible and it's going to take a couple tries obviously the main objective here is to get it nice and flat and I'll use a different piece, a little bit wider.
the larger rocks are kind of screwing me up here but that's all right and I have the largest piece I could find go ahead and continue screening it out so if those bigger rocks weren't bugging me up there it would be a lot flatter but that's okay so what I can do here is take my foam brush and go ahead and just flatten out this little wind row here so that looks okay there I'm happy with that all those little ripples I'm not worried about so next I'm gonna use Woodland Scenics fine light gray ballast and using my fingers go ahead and just sprinkle it on there and that's gonna cover up all the little ripples and blend it all in and the force of the ballast hitting on the sand it kind of does a little leveling trick by itself so more here and the reason why I'm using ballast as opposed to my other methods that I've done before is because I like to use the non sand and grout to make the tire tracks which I'll demonstrate in this video in a little while and I also have some finer lighter material that I just spilled um, part of the Woodland Scenics Road Kit that you've probably seen comes with a little packet of uh, textured material to, to make the tire tracks I like to put a little bit of that on there and do a little bit more of the ballast pretty good there all right so the next step in this area here would be to soak it with isopropyl alcohol and scenic cement um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll check back with you in a minute all right so I'm ready to glue all this down so I'm gonna begin with some 70% isopropyl alcohol and I added a couple larger rocks there so I'll begin soaking the area. Now this is a pretty tedious task, so I'm not going to bore you with it, but you get the idea. So I'll check back with you when I'm ready for uh, applying the scenic cement. All right, now that I have the area soaked with isopropyl alcohol, I'm ready to apply the scenic cement and I'll be again where I first started starting from the top and letting it work its way down so again I'm not going to bore you with this so I'll go ahead and uh, get this done and we'll move on to other things to do. Okay, so while this area is drying, I'm gonna move over here to uh, where I've got the road and go ahead and demonstrate how I do the tire track effect with the grout. All right, so I got some of the grout here and a special modified brush basically you just cut it down till it's a uh, has a real stiff point on it so basically what I'll do is I'll take some of the grout and I'll dab it down and of course I'll continue with the tire tracks here 
Uh, this takes a pretty good amount of application. So you kind of get the idea here. I'll continue on down the road here and I'll show you the finished result. Okay guys, so as you can see it's a pretty convincing dirt road. The tire tracks and everything. So when I'm pretty much done I like to take a larger brush and just blend it all together very quickly. And you can always add more. Just be careful you can't take away. So. so let's move on to something else. What I'd like to do is maybe get some sand in, into the creek here. And I have some actual dirt that I've taken from Cajon Pass. So let's go ahead and sift that out and see how that looks. And we'll continue on with the scenery here. Alright, so there's some sand from Cohen Pass that I picked up when I was walking along the road, pretty close to the creek. I'm hoping that it's going to be a little bit lighter than uh, what I've got so far, but I'm not thinking so. So I might have to add some lighter sand and some grout, because I do want the creek bed to be a little lighter than the surrounding terrain. So let's go ahead and sift a little bit of it and see what we got. Looking for the fine grain stuff here. And as I suspected, pretty much the same color. It's definitely not any lighter than what I've been using. So that's pretty much uh, not going to work. So I will have to figure something else out. All right, so I did figure out a good mixture, which is just a little bit lighter. I used the same method as before using the play sand, but this time I used non sand and grout with the color snow white. So let's go ahead and apply that to the creek bed and see how it looks. Alright, here we are at the creek. So I'm going to go ahead and start sprinkling out my mixture here. this is going to be the initial layer. I will be doing a lot of detail uh, afterwards. I just want to get a feel for the color. And so far so good. I'm liking it. It's all right if it gets up on the banks a little bit. Not a problem. You can always come back and uh, touch it up. But this is looking pretty good. So I'm happy with it. That grout really does, really does work. Do recommend giving it a try. That's going to wrap up this video here. How I do my desert scenery part one. Definitely keep an eye out for part two. I will have all the basic scenery down and I'll start adding some ground cover and bushes and trees and everything like that. So if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss nothing. And I do hope you enjoyed this video, and I will catch you on the next one.